The Origin mod adds in a new class slash race system into Minecraft, allowing you to take Minecraft in a whole new vein that may refresh your experience in the game. This mod can do various different things depending on what type of origin you choose. Immediately from the get-go, you may notice from little changes such as passive buffs and debuffs and passive abilities such as potentially needing to breathe in the water and not being able to breathe on land or other things along those lines that immediately take effect. Some origins also have active abilities that require you to press the main primary ability button which is bound to G by default. If you ever wanted to look at the abilities of your origin that you've currently chosen, you want to press the O button in order to bring up the menu. The main mod itself comes with 9 different origins by default. All of them do various different things whether it be drastically changing how you would play the game or whether it just be some very minimal little changes. Starting off with the lower impact origins, we have the avian origin. The avian origin is themed after birds, or mostly the entire species, it's kind of like a bird-like origin. The big quirks to this origin is that you're a wee bit quicker than normal, having a bit of a speed boost overall, allowing you to traverse the world a lot quicker than normal. You also have a permanent slow falling as well, making it so you can slowly float down to the ground whilst moving around the world. Of course, you can disable this slow falling by holding your shift key, but you'll also take whatever fall damage you're meant to take when you do hit the ground. Very small changes that are just going to be a nice quality of life change. There is no active ability for the avian, so we move on to the debuffs that it has by passive default. First off is the avian, you'll need to sleep at higher altitudes. This is currently set at a wire level of at least 65 blocks or higher in order to go to sleep. Not too inconvenient overall. Secondly, you cannot eat meat whatsoever. This is often one of the things that a lot of people tend to complain about but overall it's just removing one half of the food source and you can still easily collect a lot of wheat and things on those lines to get some pretty good permanent replacements as well especially if you can get yourselves up to villages to trade for golden carrots. The next low impact origin we have is the arachnid. The arachnid is based upon the spider race and has the ability to climb up walls as if they were ladders. You also have a secondary ability that will hinder foes with cobwebs whenever you hit them. This isn't exactly an active ability as it will passively add on the effect anytime you go to hit any form of mob. Of course it has a bit of a cooldown on when it will actually activate, but it will automatically activate whenever you do hit a mob as long as it's not on cooldown. There are no active abilities for the arachnid either. Moving into our debuffs, we have 3 less hearts of life, meaning that you can't take as much damage as a typical Minecraft player, as well as you cannot eat anything other than me, meaning that you will lose access to the majority of vegetables such as potatoes, carrots, golden carrots, as well as golden apples as well, but still leaving you with all the forms of meat that are in the game, which is still very good food overall. Overall, an extremely low impact base origin that really only has three passive effects that will actually hinder you or give you benefits throughout the playthrough, but even then, they're not really that drastic. Again, just like the avian origin, it's one of those origins a lot of people consider to be overall the worst ones from the vanilla pack, but it's also meant to be an extremely low impact origin, not really changing too much about the game, to allow you to have a mostly vanilla experience with some very slight differences. The next low impact origin is the Elytrin origin. The Elytrin origin has Elytra wings by nature, meaning you have them by default. They also are completely unbreakable and you won't ever have to worry about enchanting them or repairing them. Every 30 seconds, you'll be able to launch yourself up into the air using your active ability. This roughly sends you around 20 20-ish blocks up into the air, giving you ample enough air time to start flying around with your origin, especially if you're up at the top of a mountain. The last buff is that you'll also deal double damage whenever you're flying around with your elytra, meaning that you're a far more formidable foe, especially when you're flying due to your extra damage that you can deal. Moving into the drawbacks and disadvantages, you can only wear light armor, armor with protection value less or equal to chainmail. This does include the ability to wear an iron helmet, but none other iron pieces. You also will take far more kinetic damage which is fall damage and flying into blocks by default, meaning that whilst you'll be able to fly around a lot more, you have to be so much more careful about how you hit into walls or landing down on the ground as it could potentially kill you easier. And whenever you're underneath any form of blocks, especially when it's around 3 blocks or lower between your head and the block, you'll receive a stacking debuff of slowness and weakness. The next low impact origin and also the last one out of the main lot is the shulk origin. 
This is of course based after the Shulkers in Minecraft. The Shulker has an additional ability that adds 9 additional inventory slots which will not drop on death. Essentially giving you 9 extra inventory slots that are permanent inventory. You won't have to worry about losing them. You will also have a passive effect of natural protection which is a few bits of armor by default as well as you can break stone blocks without a pickaxe. The drawbacks of a Shulk is that you cannot use shields whatsoever, taking away a core line of defense. You'll also exhaust a lot quicker than normal, burning through your hunger bar at a faster rate. Moving on to your medium impact origins, you've got the Feline. The Feline does not take any form of fall damage, can jump higher while sprinting, and also has slight dark vision. You also have the ability to scare creepers away naturally as well. There is no active abilities for the Feline, but there are some awesome drawbacks. You can only mine natural stone when there are at most two adjacent natural stones. If you don't understand that, if there's more than two natural stones near the stone that you're trying to break, you will be unable to mine it unless you're having a strength potion, which negates this effect entirely. Entirely. And you also have one less of heart, so you have nine hearts, because cats have nine lives. The next medium impact origin is the Enderian. The Enderian is an Enderborn race that is quite similar to the Enderman. The Enderian will be able to teleport with Ender Pearls without actually having any whatsoever, as well as without taking any damage from said Ender Pearl use. You'll also be able to reach one block further than the normal Minecraft player, giving you an extra reach. Your E Pearls are your active ability. The drawbacks to the Enderian is that you take damage whilst in contact with water. It doesn't matter whether it just be normal water on the surface or whether it just be rain. Water will take give you damage regardless of that fact. And you're also afraid of pumpkins. This ultimately doesn't mean much aside from anyone who's wearing a pumpkin head will be entirely invisible to you. Not even their armor will be seeable by your perspective. They'll just not exist. Moving into the high impact origins, these are the origins that will impact your game the most. We have the Merling origin. You you are a fish base origin species. You can breathe underwater. You can see better underwater than most. You can break blocks underwater as if not in water, like with the Aqua Affinity enchantment. You have increased swim speed and you do not sink whilst underwater. But one of the big disadvantages that come with this is that you can only hold your breath out of water for a limited time. This entirely changes how you would play the game. It is still in entirely possible to actually successfully beat Minecraft as with the use of water bottles you can bring back a few air bubbles as well as in the rain you can successfully breathe on land it just makes everything a lot more difficult especially until you get water breathing potions whether it be from a lucky rng drop from a witch or whether you get yourself a brewing stand to make your own the next high impact origin we have the blazeborn the Blazeborn is themed after a blaze pretty self-explanatory is immune to fire and lava based damage will deal more damage whilst on fire, meaning that if you're sitting in lava or just sitting in fire in general, you'll deal overall more damage than what you do when you're not within it. And you're also immune to poison and hunger status effects, getting rid of the most annoying debuffs in the game in a lot of occasions. There is no active ability for this origin. Going through your drawbacks, you start the game in the never, meaning that whenever you die, your default spawn will not be in the overworld, but instead inside of the never. This can be both good and bad at the same time. In a single solo player world, it is possible to get out of the Never by using a mixture of the ruined Never portals, as well as Never Fortress loot, as you can get diamonds, as well as other things such as obsidian, coal, and all the things necessary to make a portal in the Never from these areas, as well as gold with some piglins. But overall, it's a huge disadvantage because you also might spawn in a small pocket of air, meaning you have to dig by hand through a bunch of Neverite before you can start doing anything. Oh, and you also will take damage whilst in contact with water, similar to how the Enderian does it, with rain and normal water. Moving into the next high impact origin, you have the Phantom Origin. The Phantom's core active ability has the ability to switch in and out of a Phantom base state. When within this Phantom state, you can walk through solid blocks, and you're also entirely invisible. When you're not in this Phantom state, you're just a transparent skin. The drawbacks of this origin, though, is that whilst you're in said Phantom space, your hunger will 
decrease quickly over time. When you're not within this phantom state, you will burn in daylight because this phantom state will be will save you from burning within the day. And you also have three less hearts of life. Next, we have the human origin, which overall does absolutely nothing. It's just the basic Minecraft player that's still there and accessible for those people who don't really want to take part of the origins mod, especially in a server based world. And whilst there are only nine origins total with the main mod itself, there are many different mods that expand upon this. First off, you've also got origin classes, which is created by the same guy who created the origins mod, A Space. I'll talk about more on that one in another video. And if you're looking for, let's say, some custom origins or other things to use with the origins mod, check out my channel. I've literally got over a hundred videos covering several different custom origins, as well as custom origin expansions for the origin mod. There surely should be something within there for you to find that you may like and play with origins with. Either way, make sure to click this video on screen when we go through the extra origins mod. And until next time, guys, leave a like, subscribe, and goodbye.